Hello and welcome to For Your Health. I'm Mark Crosby of Quincy Access Television. Thank you, as always, for joining us uh, for this program and uh, programs that we have done in the past. Uh, for Your Health is a program that looks at, uh, obviously, health issues and concerns and helps you to stay informed. Caitlin Kirby, public health nurse, has joined us today and she does join us um, for many of these episodes, so we certainly want to welcome her back. Uh, Caitlin, welcome back. Thank you for having me, as always. Always a pleasure. Uh, we want to, um, I guess, send a shout out to Westwood Media Center for uh, the, uh, I suppose, for their interest in this program. They do uh, run a lot of these uh, episodes in the series. We want to thank everyone in Westwood for continuing to do so. Caitlin, I'm sure you appreciate it as well. It's great information to kind of share with everybody. Yes, and uh, as I always say, a lot of the information, I do obtain it from the CDC, the Center of Disease Control and Prevention, and also the Massachusetts State Health Department. Um, if this is aired in other states, a lot of that information is pretty universal. Um, but just in case, check with your state just to see if anything's different. Very good. Uh, today's topic, hypertension. So let's, let's go over the outline first, and then yes. we'll kind of, um, that way folks will know what to expect. Uh, we'll start with a definition. Uh, well, we're actually going to start with what is blood pressure, mm -hmm. since that's uh, the factor. Yes. And then we will talk about what is hypertension. We will talk about risk factors health complications resulting from hypertension and prevention and maintenance. So let's talk about blood pressure. Yeah, so I really wanted to cover this topic. A lot of people watching um, probably know about hypertension, um, but it's in, uh, according to the CDC, about nine out of 10 Americans will develop or deal with hypertension in their lifetime. Um, so it's nine out of 10, nine out of 10. So it's very important to know, um, and to begin to know what hypertension is. Of course, you have to start with that. What is blood pressure in general? Um, so blood pressure is the pressure of blood that is pushing through against the walls of your arteries. Um, and these arteries circulate the blood from your heart to other areas of the body. So all your other organs within the body. Um, and your blood pressure will rise and fall throughout the day uh, normally. And it's important to know, so blood pressure, what we're doing when we measure blood pressure, um, it is measured as your systolic blood pressure over your diastolic. Um, so your systolic blood pressure, that is um, the pressure of your arteries when your heart is beating. So when your heart beats, that's when the blood is being pushed through. And then the diastolic blood pressure is when your heart is at rest. So it's kind of, um, so the systolic will always be higher than the diastolic. So when we're sleeping, that would be diastolic. Yeah, um, well, it's all the same. Like it, it's, it's a con continuous. So it's always systolic over diastolic because as your heart is beating, um, it's a continuous. Okay. Yes. Um, that's why I'm not a health nurse. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. No, always, all questions are welcome. Um, and I did have that when we do, um, measure blood pressure, it is, um, mm. HG is like the unit of measure, so it's millimeters of mercury. And it's not that important to know, but I just wanted to note that that is just a unit of measure that is used when we look at blood pressure. Very good. Well, now that you've kind of set the stage, so to speak, let's talk about uh, what is hypertension. So hypertension um, is just high blood pressure. Um, and this is when your blood pressure is consistently higher than normal. Um, and when a person has increased blood pressure levels, you put your body at an increased risk for um, a lot of health problems, including heart disease, heart attack, and stroke. Um, and when we say higher than normal, the average blood pressure, or the normal blood pressure, I should say, should be around 120 over 80. That would be in a healthy individual. 
And when a physician is going to diagnose high blood pressure, um, there are two different, according to the CDC, two different guidelines um, they can go by. So some physicians will say if your blood pressure is consistently over 140, over 90, then you would be diagnosed with hypertension. Um, and that was according to a study that was done in 2003, so it's a little bit older. Um, and then with another guidelines that were released in 2017, um, this would be a blood pressure that is consistently 130 over 80. So it's not, you won't always see the 140 over 90. Um, but it's important to know that blood pressure, high blood pressure on its own, doesn't always have symptoms. You might not have any symptoms of it until you have a serious issue like a heart attack or a stroke. Um, so really the only way to know is knowing your risk factors and monitoring your blood pressure. Um, so definitely work with your primary care doctor to know what are your risk factors. We will review some of the basic ones. Um, and also where to, how to monitor it. So there are like home devices you can develop, can get. I know um, walking into Stop and Shop in different markets, they may have that device you just put your arm right into. Um, and then also you can check in with your local community because I know here in Quincy, um, our senior center in collaboration with our health department, we offer clinics at our Kennedy Center um, on Wednesdays and Thursdays from 10 to 11 every day, or on those days. So always check in, because a lot of local boards of health, um, we are like, that is offered, and it's a great thing, because people can't always get to their doctors for daily blood pressures, of course. True, and I like the fact that you mentioned you may have it and not know it. I think in, in a, probably in a relatively severe case, you may have a headache, you may have head discomfort, but mm -hmm. you could have high blood pressure without having that symptom. Yes, so it can be silent, but of course you can get that, the pressure and the headaches, constant headaches. Um, so when you are, if, like a constant headache, it seems like something like, oh, I'll just take some Tylenol, and it could be from anything, it could be dehydration, but if you're having chronic headaches, that's definitely something to check in with your doctor to rule out what could be causing that? Let's look at uh, risk factors. Hypertension, again, high blood pressure, is never a good thing. No, so never a good thing. Um, and it will it typically develops over time in a person's lifetime. And it can be caused by different health conditions, lifestyle choices, and a family history or genetics. Um, so when we say the, like health conditions and family history. Um, granted, if you have a health condition, you want to make sure you're managing it well, um, following that treatment plan, and it can help reduce your risk. But like a family history, you can't change that, obviously. Um, but when you talk about the lifestyle choices, those are factors where you can make life modifications to help lower your risk and um, to lower your risk of some of the severe complications that come along with hypertension. Um, so one major health condition that we see um, that goes kind of hand in hand with hypertension is diabetes. And according to the CDC, approximately six out of 10 people diagnosed with diabetes also have high blood pressure. Um, and this is because with diabetes, when the sugars build up in your blood, it, um, it can also increase your risk of heart disease. So it's very important if you are a diabetic, you're following your treatment plan and working closely with your doctor to manage it um, and help try to reduce your blood pressure. Because if you have, if you let those two conditions just go unmanaged, um, it puts you at a severe risk of further health complications. And often you hear folks that are diabetic that um, it leads to another condition which oftentimes could be fatal. Yes, 
yes. And hypertension, if un, like leading to stroke or like uh, heart attacks, it can be fatal. You can lose your life. So it may not seem that important, but you think of it um, with hypertension, your blood pressure, this is how blood is circulating oxygen and to your entire body, which helps your body and all of the organs operate. So it's very important. The next topic that we're going to discuss has to do with diet, and everyone can control diet. Yes. So a lot, and as I, as I said earlier, 9 out of 10 Americans will probably experience hypertension in their lives. So there's a lot of people out in the community that deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis. There are medications that you can take and these lifestyle choices that we'll go into. Um, so it's very important to just manage your overall health to stay healthy as long as you can, which is the ultimate goal for everybody. So when we're talking about that unhealthy diet, when it comes to your blood pressure, two main components with an unhealthy diet is if people are taking in too much sodium and not enough potassium. Um, so that sodium or table salt, we see, especially in the American diet, we see a lot of that sodium intake come from processed foods and restaurant foods. Um, I'm guilty myself of ordering out too often. Which makes me also think that when you're shopping, not you per se, but when we're all shopping in a grocery store, to really look at the ingredients, look at the levels of sodium that might exist. Yes. Because prepared foods, uh, do carry high numbers. Yes, because um, a lot of times that sodium is increased to preserve the food. Um, but the American Heart Association does have a label on um, food items that are declared as heart healthy. Um, so that's a, because it's very, it can be complicated to look because there's so many different products out there, especially when you go into a grocery store, it's overwhelming. Um, but due to the American Heart Association, look for that little heart on the label and it will say AHA approved. So that's something you can look out for. And then for potassium, a lot of diets can be low in potassium and this mineral is very important to help your body work properly. And if taken at, if you have an adequate intake, it can help lower your blood pressure. Um, so a lot of foods that we see that are high in, high in potassium, so these would be bananas, potatoes, beans, and yogurt. Um, and we could get each one you could dive deeper into. So like even those yogurts, there's so many different products. Make sure that you're not going for the highest sugar yogurt because that's also not good for your diet. Physical inactivity. We talked about this. It's very important to kind of get out and exercise. Yes. Yeah, so always um, keeping your body moving is the best way to stay healthy uh, along with your diet, of course. Um, so regular physical activity helps your heart and blood vessels stay strong. Um, and by keeping these blood vessels in your heart strong, your body is able to lower your blood pressure. Um, so a lot of times we see with people who have sedentary lifestyles, so they're not active, um, it really puts you at a more increased risk for developing hypertension. And I guess the next um, subtopic is kind of related to physical inactivity, and that's obesity. Yeah, so a lot of these risk factors kind of go hand in hand or linked um, closely with each other. So individuals that experience obesity, um, the excess body weight makes your heart work harder. Um, so it's a lot harder for the blood, your heart to pump the blood and oxygen around the body. And so over time, um, this would put an added stress on your blood vessels and arteries as it's pumping along. Um, and obesity is also linked, I didn't, there's too much to go into in depthly, but it's also linked to higher bad cholesterol levels, um, which could increase the plaque within your arteries. So if you think of, if there's a plaque buildup in your arteries, um, the blood can't flow 
as well either. Um, so it's basically like a clog. Yes, yes. So it can ultimately, this hypertension associated with obesity, you can, um, you're at an increased risk for heart disease and stroke. Excess alcohol intake. Yeah, so a lot of people aren't happy to hear this one. Um, well, I guess the key word there is excess, although uh, we should mention that alcohol, one week we'll find out that um, it's okay in moderation, the next week we'll find out that actually no alcohol is good. Yes, so according to, so it is linked with hypertension of course, um, and according to the CDC, what is recommended is for um, Women should have no more than one drink a day, and men should have no more than two drinks a day. So if you um, are an individual who drinks either on a daily basis, weekly basis, um, I know when you go to your primary care visits, your annual checkups, they do ask this question. Um, so just try to be as honest as you can, so that way your doctor knows to monitor you. Um, and it's always best to limit that intake. This is just water, by the way. Yes, yes. Let's talk about uh, tobacco use, because uh, there's really never a good time to smoke tobacco. Yeah, so tobacco use, smoking can damage your lung and blood vessels, so it increases your blood pressure, increases your risk for stroke and heart attack. And also, when I did the research, they even said like nicotine can increase that blood pressure as well. So as I feel like I probably say this in every episode that we do, tobacco use is not recommended. Um, and there's a lot of information out there at this point. Um, so make sure you're taking your steps to reduce that if you do smoke or try your best to stop. Genetics, we talked about genetics uh, before, and family history. Um, not much you can do there, but you can inform your physician that um, there is a family history or there isn't a family history. Yes, um, and I did find it very interesting because a lot of times with this genetics, so like if your your family history, diabetes runs in the family, hypertension runs in the family, there is a chance, of course, that you can develop it. Um, but a big component of why this could also run in families is because um, of the common environment. So uh, those other potential factors such as diet, exercise le like level um, you live the same you you're brought up to live the same way your family lives so that is also a big component of how we see this running in families so much let's look at um, age race and ethnicity yes yeah, so um, blood pressure it tends to rise as we age so as we mentioned nine out of ten Americans will develop this in their lifetime for race and ethnicity, um, African American individuals um, develop high blood pressure more often than white people. Hispanics, Asians, Pacific Islanders, American Indians, or Alaskan Natives do. Um, so this could also, so there is a genetic component to this, but it also could be your environmental factors, um, your cultural diets, and so forth health complications resulting from hypertension, and there are quite a few. Yeah, so if you leave high blood pressure unmanaged completely, um, you are risking serious damage to major organs such as your heart, brain, kidneys, and your eyes. With your heart, you're thinking of heart attack and heart disease because, of course, high blood pressure over time is damaging your arteries and they're less elastic over time um, so it's decreasing the flow therefore that blood in the oxygen is not able to circulate as it probably should um, we could also see um, angina um, which is chest pain um, 
And then heart attack with the high blood pressure, you might get the buildup of the plaque, especially if you have other conditions alongside that. Um, so it can cause a blockage with the heart attack, which can be very fatal. And even heart failure due to not enough oxygen circulating. We also have stroke and brain problems. Um, so again, kind of similar to that heart attack, um, it can cause a um, blockage to the brain. So a stroke obviously impairs, it can cause disabilities in speech, movement, and other basic day-to-day -day activities. It can also kill you. Um, and it's also individuals, especially if you're dealing with hypertension, like in your midlife, um, it's linked to poor cognitive function and even dementia as you get older. We have kidney disease, so adults with, especially adults with diabetes and hypertension, um, they have a higher risk of developing chronic kidney disease. And then we also see vision loss because you think this is affecting every organ. But with vision loss, it can be caused by blood vessel damage, fluid buildup under the retina, and nerve damage. Um, also, because of that increased risk of stroke, um, if an individual experiences stroke, it can also be associated with vision loss. So like it's very important to make sure you're maintaining this. I like, I think, your reference. Um to midlife, because certainly that is me, midlife. Uh, but, you know, it just made me think, too, that um, hypertension probably isn't all that common in younger folks. So not as much. Um, I'm sure I didn't research totally into that, but a lot of times, like, I know um, the American nation has been dealing a lot with, like, childhood obesity. So we may see it higher than we used to. That's exactly what I was thinking about. Um, yeah. If there's overweight children, certainly they could have hypertension. Yeah, so individuals who in the past maybe weren't seen as high risk, they could be now. So it really can affect everybody. Um, although mostly, hopefully, people tend to see it later in their lifetime. Prevention and maintenance. Prevention is something that I always stress, you always stress it um, in every episode because if you can prevent it in the first place, you are well ahead of the game. Yes, so um, definitely know your risk factors, I want to say. Um, and you want to make sure if you are, di a lot of times doctors can even diagnose you as pre hypertension, so it just means you're at an increased risk for developing. Um, so monitoring your blood pressure is very important because again, that might be the only way you're gonna find out you have hypertension. But some steps to take in your everyday life, make sure you're getting that physical activity. Um, so that's about at least 150 minutes of physical activity a week, so about 30 minutes, five days a week. Again, stop smoking, that's huge. Um, you wanna make sure you're eating a healthier diet by low, limiting your sodium and alcohol. Maintain a healthy weight. Managing stress is very important, um, especially if you are experiencing hypertension. Stress um, can increase your risk of de like developing a stroke or a heart attack. And then very important, make sure you're talking to your doctor and taking your blood pressure medications as prescribed. So even if you wake up and you're not feeling sick, take it every day, take it as prescribed. Don't stop anything unless you're talking to your doctor. Or if you do feel you have to stop something, make sure you contact your doctor as soon as possible to let them know and they'll work with you to figure out a different plan. And I like the fact that you mentioned contact your doctor because uh, a fear nowadays is that folks get on the internet with um, symptoms and start typing away and mm -hmm. that's not an accurate description of what you may or may not have. Yes, the human body is very complex and a lot of these different conditions symptoms can mimic each other. Um, so although you can go online to get some research to get it 
started. Um, I always recommend going from an accredited source or website. Um, like a lot of the state, the .gov website, so like the Massachusetts State Health Department, especially the uh, CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Those are great sites to get information from, um, but never self-diagnose. And if you do, if you look up hypertension or you watch this and you're like, I check off those risk factors, make sure you check in with your doctor. Well, because we said that it's okay to go on to the internet and maybe through your search, that might help clarify what you would say to your physician. But again, you shouldn't self-diagnose. Yes, check in with the doctor. They'll do the appropriate follow-up. Um, and a lot of times I know people that I run into here and there um, with working in public health, people like I haven't seen a physician in 10 years. So never be afraid to start. Um, there's a lot of good programs out there, great healthcare providers, um, especially in our Quincy community. We're very lucky with our healthcare around here. Um, so make sure you get, get it started. It's never too late and you wanna make sure you are healthy enough to enjoy your life. Very good. Well, thank you for, again, another uh, information packed program. Yes, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. And uh, thank you for watching. I want to thank Dylan and Preston. They are interns from the local high school, Quincy High School, and they are in the film and broadcasting class. So this uh, certainly, uh, we appreciate your help, uh, Dylan and Preston, on this. And once again, uh, please continue to support uh, the local access television station in the community in which you reside. Take care.